Should you buy a Tormach or a Haas? Well, it depends. Let's have a look. I see the question all the time appear on Tormach forums. When someone is thinking about buying a new machine and saying, what should I buy? Immediately, all of these people jump in and say, well, you should buy a Haas, and here's what you should buy. But the real answer it depends on a lot of factors. And so it's important that you take a look at what you need and what the options are in a different light. I was going to buy a Tormach. Let me tell you my story. About five years ago, I had a TAG desktop CNC machine that had ball screws, and I was at a crossroads. I really wanted something that was more capable than the TAG. The TAG did a really good job for a long time, but I was ready to step up. So I started looking at uh, Tormox, and I settled on the Tormox 770 at the time because it had a 10,000 RPM spindle, because I do mold work with a lot of uh, miniature end mills or micro end mills, it was important for me to have a high, high spindle RPM. At the same time, it was important for me to have a machine that was accurate and had low backlash. I got really close to buying a used Tormach. There was one that was uh, within about an hour and a half drive of where I live. And it came up on the market for a great price. So. I immediately contacted the person. It was really hard to get a reply. I was trying to arrange to visit him and see his machine. And before I could get a reply as to when I could visit, he increased the price $5,000. So it went from being a really great deal to being not that much different from a brand new machine. So I'm thinking, okay, now what do I do? And I went back and forth. Plus I looked at some of the, the videos that were out there about uh, Nerdly, who uh, Jason Snyder, I think is his name, who had a bad experience with a Tormach. Now, it seems like there are a very small number of machines that have issues, but they do exist. I didn't want to be one of the recipients of the machine. So that means, you know, there were advantages of a used uh, Tormach or a new one. And I kept going back and forth and then some upgrades came up for the tag and I decided to go that route. The next thing that happened is I stumbled across this machine about an hour's drive away that was on the Facebook marketplace for a price that was higher than what I was looking to pay. So the for the Tormach 770 I was looking at about $15,000 at the time that was with a power draw bar uh, but without an automatic tool changer with the enclosure and not too many options. This machine came up for 25000 and when I made them an offer, they accepted my offer at 22 plus something. I forget the details. So it was a stretch from what I was going to pay for the Tormach. You know, I was thinking, okay, I'll buy a new Tormach 770 for about 15000 there are some differences with this machine uh, and one of them is that uh, it has a tool changer, an automatic tool changer with a capacity of 20 tools. And at the time, I didn't think that was at all important, but since it came with the machine, fine. This machine also came with a fourth axis, uh, which also was not something I was looking for in the short term. But those two things, of course, increased the value and the utility of the machine. One of the interesting things about the tool changer, as I said, is I didn't think it's something that was that important. Now, I do not want to go back to a machine without a tool changer. I use this tool changer all the time. It's really great for longer mold jobs where I don't have to babysit the machine and come in every so often to change the tool. It can do that itself. It's just wonderful. So let's take a look at um, some of the other things that you should look at if you're going to look at different machines. What is the space and weight limitations of your location? This machine weighs 1,500 pounds, which is more, I think, than the 770 weight, but not by a lot. 
Uh, this is also not that much larger than a 770. It's actually smaller than a Tormach 1100. So from a size and weight perspective, this is comparable. But in terms of the capabilities, this is definitely not comparable. Uh, and I'll get into those details uh, in a little bit. At least in the past, if you went to the Haas website, one of the things that would happen is they would show the starting price as the educational price. Now there's quite a bit of difference between the educational price and the list price for non-educational users. They're, they're not doing that now, so I think they may have stopped doing that. But that also led to some of the people saying, oh, for what you're going to pay for the Tarmac, you could get a Haas mini mill or a, you know, a Haas machine along those lines. That wasn't true there was actually a big price difference. Now I'm gonna tell you some developments that I saw this week that changed that equation, but I'll get to that in a little minute. I am in a residential area, and in the US, residential means that we have 110 volts and 220 or 240 volts single phase. Some of the machines, the larger machines, require three phase. I don't have three phase, you know, I could, get three phase by using rotary phase converter. That's not ideal. So if you look at a Haas, there are three machines, I'm aware of, or three classes of machines that will work with uh, 220, 240 volt single phase, like I have here. The office mill, which is what I have here, is one of those machines. Uh, the newer version of the office mill is called the compact mill. They also have the mini mill, which you can get for single phase. And then the tool room mills or TM series of mills uh, is another option. So the thing about the mini mills and the tool room mills is they're going to be taller and heavier and probably wider. So that's something you need to check before you decide to go that route. Then there's a question of new versus used. Okay, so this is a used machine. When I purchased this machine, uh, about uh, two years ago, uh, it was 10 years old, I, I think. But, but it, basically, this is a 2009 machine. So it's um, you know, not on the young end, but it was old enough that I got a great deal on it. Uh, the newer the machines, the more expensive they're going to be, the closer they are going to be to list price. This machine is about as old as you can get before you switch to a previous generation controller. So let me talk a little bit about controller generations. This is called pre-NGC. NGC, which stands for next generation controller, is their latest version. And some people love the NGC, some people hate the NGC and prefer this version. But the point is, there was another version before this version and you can distinguish them by you know, what's up here. On the older versions, there's an analog meter there. So it's really easy to tell by looking at used photos, even if the machine is not on, whether it's this generation or newer, or whether it's older. The reason the older is important to be aware of is that when you go older than this controller, they're no longer supported. You can't get replacement parts. If you have a serious issue with one of those old controllers, you have to upgrade to a newer controller and that gets really expensive. So in my mind, if you, you know, don't want to take on that risk, you want around 2009 and later. There's some variability in that date, but that's a rough guideline. If you're willing to go with the older controllers, you can get much, much better prices. But of course, now you're getting into territory where you, you have to, you know, buyer has to be aware and there's more that you have to look into. So if you look at the machines like this, um, Haas has this charging model for different options. If you buy a Tormach, you get all the capabilities of the controller. End of story. If you buy a Haas, you get the basic uh, capabilities, but then there are a whole bunch of options. For example, if you want high-speed machining, that's an option. If you want rigid tapping, that's another option. If you want to have macros, that's another option. This machine has high-speed machining and rigid tapping. High-speed machining is really important if you're going to do trochoidal uh, or adaptive milling. 
from what I understand, I don't really know for sure how much of a difference it makes, but it's not a cheap option. It's a few thousand dollars. Rigid tapping is not something that was on my required list, but it's really nice. I'm very happy to have it. So those are the things to keep in mind uh, when you're looking at a used machine. When you're dealing with a machine like this, or even a heavier machine, moving it is a lot more challenging. So I have a previous video where I showed how this machine was delivered. It was delivered by riggers, who are movers that specialize in, in moving heavy equipment. And they were able to do amazing things, getting this machine through a fairly uh, narrow residential doorway and, you know, on the other side of my garage. So that cost something as well. As I mentioned, even though I spent about uh, 22500 on this machine, the delivered price was higher because I had to pay for the rigors, which I think was a couple thousand dollars. It can be a lot more than that. I was able to get it lower because I was willing to wait until they had a run up in this direction. So I was able to piggyback uh, on deliveries to several other customers, which means I didn't pay for the entire round trip. And that makes a big difference. Another thing that's different about uh, a machine like this is that Haas has a reputation for having expensive spare parts. And that certainly can be true. Fortunately, the parts that I had to buy, which is a, a new door glass, the new door glass was not that expensive. I also needed a new uh, spring strut, and that was not that expensive either. Um, I think the, the total was less than $200 for all of the things that I had to replace. Why do I think um, it's worthwhile getting a used Haas over a new Tormach, which is the route that I went. And here are a couple of reasons, uh, and I'm looking down at my notes again. One is that it just works. I've seen a lot of comments about, particularly if you have the tool changer, the, the fiddling people have to do to get it to be reliable. And with this tool changer, it works every time, all day, all night. <laughs> Literally, all night. I've run jobs overnight on this machine and I'm not afraid to do that. It's, for, it's rigid. They're designed to be very rigid. Um, this produces great finishes. Uh, this machine has a 30,000 RPM spindle, whereas the Tormach had a 10,000 RPM spindle, so I'm able to, to do uh, micromilling, micromachining in less time, a lot less time than it would take otherwise. A Haas machine is a workhorse. It's designed to be a workhorse. It's designed for industrial customers, and you can, I can really feel that difference. If reliability is something that's important to you and you want to use the machine and just use it, a used, a used or new Haas I think is a great choice. A used Haas is not the only option you have. There are other machines out there. I'm not familiar with the other machines, but I've heard good things about uh, the robo drills and also Fidal machines. Uh, Fidal, uh, even the older machines, you can still get a lot of replacement parts. Okay, now let's talk about uh, the new option that's available from Haas. They just released a new version of the tool room mill, the TM0. And they have two versions of that, the TM0 and the TM0P. The difference between without the P and with the P is the P version has a 10 pocket tool changer. So you get that advantage. And it's not that much more expensive to get the, the P version. Now the non-P version starts at about $25,000. If you go to the P version, it's uh, more than that. But you know, either way, you can probably get a machine for about thirty thousand dollars. Now that is, you know, pushing it a little bit. But if you look at a high-end uh, Tormac 1100 uh, MX, uh, that's up there, definitely up there. So I'd say a TM zero P or a zero is comparable with a high-end 1100 MX, and so definitely worth looking at because. It's going to be a workhorse, and it's just going to work. Let's talk a little bit about the used market where it is today, because I expect in a few months from now, it's going to maybe six months, I'm not sure, it's going to be very different. Which is that right now, uh, used machines are selling for higher prices than I had seen been seeing them a few years ago, by quite a bit, 
and they go very, very quickly. And I think that's because the, the economy is, is really coming back and a lot of people are buying machines. It's hard to get a good price on a used machine at the moment. But if you wait and you're willing to keep an eye on eBay and other places, you can probably still find a good uh, deal. Uh, the other thing is getting back to the, like the two room uh, ma mills, the TM series. If you go back to pre, you know, before this version of the controller, so before 2009, you can definitely get some really good deals. But again, you're dealing with all the machines that have fewer capabilities. This is also where I think it's worth talking about uh, memory size. So one thing to be aware of is that memory size does not equal how large of a program you can run. This machine has one megabyte of memory, uh, which is small for the size of the jobs that I often run, like some of those overnight jobs. Those can easily be well past one megabyte in size. The good news is that I never, almost never run programs from memory. I always run programs using what's called FNC, uh, which is, um, I'll have to look it up, but it's um, a way to stream the data from another source, either a USB stick or from the network. Uh, and I'm using the network now. If you have older machines, you can use something called uh, DNC. And there are options out there on the market that allow you to buy a little box that has DNC and Wi-Fi, so you can basically get the same streaming characteristics from another machine over the network with those older machines. So you can definitely run very large programs with older machines that don't have much memory at all. This is a subject that I know can generate a lot of opinions and strong opinions. And the one thing I wanted to say is that something that is good for you may not be good for someone else. So lots of opinions are good, but they are not necessarily the best opinion for every person. So if you're thinking about buying a new machine, definitely take a look at uh, used uh, Haas machines. Also take a look at the new uh, TM series, the TM0 and TM0P machines, as well as the Tormox and make a decision that's best for you. I hope you found this episode useful. Please give me a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, you might want to hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button so you're notified when I have a new video. Because sometimes I, I have a video every week and sometimes there's a little bit of a delay in between when I get busy at work like recently. Thanks for watching.